Yes, as the title says, I switch over to SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X for about a month and a half at this point in time, and I absolutely love it. There are actually two main reasons why I made the switch, so let's get into it. Please also do hit that like and subscribe button on both channels as shown down below there, as Tech Creator is our channel for PC related stuff and NL Tech is more for mobile devices. And the ROG Xbox Ally X is like a crossover between the two categories, so that's why I put both of them together as collaboration, even though it's just me alone. Now, let's start talking about why. My first reason is of course gonna be sleep functionality because I think that it is a very important functionality that it just doesn't work well on Windows at all. Let me show you a demonstration right now. I'm playing Silk Song on the ROG Xbox Ally X and I just really like this kind of Metroidvania games as I can just pick it up, play for a section or two and then put it down and continue some other time. And this is where the sleep functionality really comes into play because, you know, if I want to put it down, then I have to make it go to sleep instead of shutting down because booting it back up is a problem because of the splash screen and whatnot. I know this is a first world problem, but the Nintendo Switch really spoiled me, so sleep functionality is very important for me right now. And yesterday, while I was at the hospital waiting for someone, I was playing Guardians of the Galaxy. I was in the middle of some scene and that person just came out and said, hey, let's go home. So at that point, I couldn't just wait, ask the person to wait for a save point before I can pack everything up. So what I did, press this power button, make it go to sleep, and then go back home and continue because the sleep functionality works flawlessly right here. And every time I visit the ROG Xbox Ally X's subreddit, a lot of people will complain that their sleep functionality is just not working because I consistently see people complaining about things like this. And the solution is always just use Hibernate instead. But Hibernate is not really a solution, I would say. It's just sidestepping the issue. Hibernation is practically taking a snapshot of whatever you're doing right at that instant and then shutting down the entire system. And when the device finally wakes up from hibernation, it restores that snapshot. It's not as instantaneous as sleep and wake. Sleep, however, is powering down everything other than the processor and the RAM. Both these components will still sip very low amounts of power over time and you can wake it up almost instantaneously. Hibernation does save a lot more power in the long run if the device is hibernating for like a few days or more compared to just sleeping. So there are a few major differences between the two. Either way, I just prefer to make my devices go to sleep as I play my games on this kind of device very often. And I mean, both sleep and hibernation should work perfectly in Windows as well, right? We shouldn't have to just pick one. And uh, that is why I chose SteamOS. That is the first big reason, actually. My second reason is due to how Windows 11 functions. Yes, we now have the new Xbox full screen experience and it brings forth a new UI which I think is a big improvement, but it is still very buggy to this day. Again, on Reddit, there are many people saying that the command center just doesn't work anymore. And uh, yeah, the actual solution to this issue is that you have to go into desktop mode, open up Armory Crate SE, and then it will somehow make the control center work again. And then you can go back and reboot to the Xbox full screen experience and it will work again for some time. Why I know this is because I personally experienced this before and uh, yeah, it only happens after like a software update or something like that. Also, do remember that every time I'm in desktop mode and I want to go back to the Xbox full screen experience, I have to do a full restart and it is just very annoying. And another issue that happened to me that instantly got me frustrated is that when I was playing Silk Song on the Xbox full screen experience mode, all of a sudden it just decided to do this. Yes, Windows update. Not just any Windows update, the AMD GPU driver update. I thought, what the heck is happening to this device as the screen just flickered and my game crashed. Yeah, I just lost all my progress at that point in time as the device just decided to update itself when I was in the game. So those are the two big reasons why I switched away from Windows 11. I mean, this is a PC in itself, so we can install whatever OS we want. I've dabbled with a few Linux distros in the past on the ROG Ally, the original one, but those were more like experiments more than like commitment. So I decided to try SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X this time. But why SteamOS over Bezite though? 
well, I tried Bezite and I think Bezite comes with a lot of stuff that I don't use, kind of considered bloatware, like the Android emulator and also the Heroic game launcher. I don't use either of them, so I don't need them. And the HHD, the handheld daemon, at least at that time when I was testing Bezite, it was still very buggy. Before we begin installing SteamOS or Bezite for that matter, do keep in mind that a lot of tinkering and troubleshooting is required. We are not doing an installation guide here as you can find another guide down in the description below as that actually helped me a lot as well. Also, the official SteamOS website listed this. It does not support the ROG Xbox Ally or the Xbox Ally X as of now. So we'll download this SteamOS version 3.8 instead. We'll update it to SteamOS 3.9 once it's installed because this sketchy looking website, which is actually the official directory for SteamOS images, is quite confusing. And once installed, we are done. Most of the functions already work flawlessly. For example, Sleep and Wake works flawlessly. It will sometimes go to the max fan speed for a split second when I wake the device up, but I think that's a very small issue. Brightness and volume also works flawlessly alongside with the power profiles. Yes, I'm just using the native power profiles because I think that it really does a really good job there. We can use Deki to do a few more customizations as well. Deki is a platform where we can install plugins to do customizations. We can fine tune the TDP using Deki and the simple Deki TDP plugin, but I personally don't care much about the fine tuning at all. RGB lighting actually doesn't have any official native support, so that is why I have Husing installed just to disable those RGBs. Animation changer practically changes the boot and sleep animations, which I think is a small touch to personalize the device even further. What doesn't work as of now though is actually night mode. Toggling night mode does not do anything as of now, but I think that's the only problem that I found. Everything else works perfectly, except for non-Steam games. Non-Steam games will require some tinkering via desktop mode, and there are actually many different ways to install non-Steam games. For Zelda Zone Zero though, I had to go through Lutris instead. Other than that, everything works great. So here's a quick rundown of all of the pros and cons of using SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X. Starting off with the pros, sleep works flawlessly, so that is great. It is very customizable via Deki. It surprisingly has better support than Bezite because the HHD is quite buggy when I tried it out at the time. Vibration is surprisingly strong here because the two vibration motors inside the triggers, which are called impulse triggers, are also treated as basic vibration motors, so it will vibrate together with the vibration motors in the grips as well. It is also perfect if all of your games are on Steam. However, Steam OS will need a lot of fiddling, especially in desktop mode. It will also require an external keyboard and mouse if you are using it in desktop mode. I can't find any on-screen keyboards, so it's actually really annoying to navigate there. BIOS updates are gonna be annoying on the ROG Xbox Ally X if we're using SteamOS since we have to do it the most traditional way of transferring the BIOS file inside a USB stick, stab it in and then go into BIOS to update it that way. On that note, the MCU touch panel and whatever USB PD PPS charging firmware updates are basically impossible on Linux, so yeah. If you want to do SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X, then make sure you have a copy of Windows, bootable Windows, that you can go in there and update all of those components firmware instead. And the biggest negative of using SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X is that your Xbox Game Pass is just not going to be possible here. And that's my experience switching over from Windows 11 to SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X. I've been enjoying it so far and it just works despite being in a better state. So if you have any other questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you think about SteamOS on this device and I would like to help you clear your doubts before jumping over to SteamOS as well because it is quite a daunting task to an unfamiliar territory. Also, do let me know what do you think about SteamOS or Bezite in general and we will see you guys in the next video. By the time this video is published though, I think it is time to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, thanks for the amazing 2025 and we hope to bring you even more bangers in the year 2026. So do subscribe to both channels down in the description below. 
and we'll see you there. Yes, I do sound sick, I know, because I am indeed sick. My nose is still a bit blocky. Uh, 